You're listening to the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. In today's publishing landscape, you can reach fans all over the world. Query letters are a thing of the past. You don't even need a literary agent. There is nothing standing in the way of making a living from writing. Join two best-selling authors who have self-published more than 20 books between them. Now, on to the show with your hosts, Autumn Burt and Jasper Schmidt. Hello, I'm Jasper. And I'm Autumn. This is episode 121 of the Am Writing Fantasy podcast. And uh, over the past few months, we have been testing out some different types of writing software. We tried Fictionary, Autocrit, and Pro Writing Aid. And I think we've arrived at a favorite that we can talk about today, Autumn. Yes, I definitely have my favorite, and there's actually, I could mention one or two features that I wish it had, or one of the other ones sort of did, so, you know, maybe I'll do some, maybe I'll be able to convince the staff at the one, our top choice that had a few features, but that's my wish list. <laughs> Yeah, so we are going to deep dive a bit on Pro Writing Aid today and uh, share our thoughts about it and uh, why we, well, I, I think it's not a secret that we like it very much. So uh, we're going to talk about that. And uh, hopefully that will help some people if they are not familiar with Pro Writing Aid already, then maybe they will be inclined to check it out. Or if they are already using Pro Writing Aid, maybe we're going to mention a few things they were not aware of. Absolutely. Or at least maybe some ways of using it that they hadn't considered. So I think it'll be fun. I've definitely been using this tool heavily on some major novels. I feel like all I've been doing is editing since January. (laughs) But that's okay. That means there was a lot of writing in 2020. So that's all right, right? It's good to be pushing things out the door and publishing. So that's exciting. So how are things before we get over there? uh... Yeah. Yeah, indeed. No, uh, things are good. Uh, it's 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 been Easter holidays here in in Denmark, which means that uh, I actually got quite some writing done on our oh, book one. Excellent. Yes, you have been and, doing uh, really well. Yeah, I'm only seven chapters away from the ending now, so that's pretty cool. That is so cool. More editing! Yay! No. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna be done editing. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like forever ongoing. <laughs> It is my punishment in life, I think. <laughs> but yeah, you, yeah, you're just clocking right ahead. Well, I hope you had a good Easter as well. Some time off. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, due to the usual corona stuff, the, there wasn't much we could do. Uh, but uh, I got some IKEA furniture put together and uh, we got rid of a bit of the... I think we are down to like five or six moving boxes after we moved uh, but everything else has now been unpacked that's amazing so that's good that is really good that means you can hopefully now that it's turning towards springish i would hope there that you can actually go for walks on the beach or through town and not be worried about you know coming back to an apartment full of boxes yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and we've also started to allow uh, f- soccer again now. So I've been out refereeing a couple of matches, which was nice to get started on again. So things are lighting up. Uh, no, you can't say lighting up. That sounds like we're putting it on fire. But <laughs> 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 things are getting better. <laughs> that's exciting. That's always an improvement. Yeah. Uh, how about you? Oh, good wife. Well, my husband um, was on top of things and he made an appointment for me to actually both of us to go get our coronavirus vaccine. So I'm very excited and nice. I'm hoping at the end of the month um, I might get to go down and see my parents. And that's exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. And we have, we don't have kids, so we didn't have like an Easter where you hide things, but we have our own tradition since we never did have children that we, um, I have a deal. I've got an in with the Easter bunny and he comes every year and gives me this nice little basket of all my favorite things. I don't know how he knows, but then he hides Adam's everything. So everything is hidden and I get to spend the morning sipping my tea, you know, sitting there like this, watching him <laughs> hunt for his Easter candy. And it's just one of my favorite holidays. <laughs> um, he has a, he gets me back though. <laughs> 
uh, my tea delivery is brought by um, Easter. The Easter Bunny's cousin is Jack, and Jack likes to hide my tea delivery. So you know, we each have our own <laughs> issues with rabbits. <laughs> right, rabbits are naughty. <laughs> I guess so. No, actually, we had an actual visitor that this year was possibly an Easter raccoon. We had a raccoon um, outside the cabin on Saturday night, and he was adorable and just these big eyes. He was a very healthy, feisty, invasive raccoon, <laughs> but he hasn't come back since then. Wow. Yeah, all that animal life. I, I noticed as well somebody in the uh, Facebook group, uh, and apologies, I forgot who it was, but I just noticed that somebody was uh, posting some stuff about, uh, I think it was a she, uh, that she almost died because she was uh, she got bit by a snake. Oh, no. And uh, she survived and she was okay now. Good. But uh, But it was just like... Sometimes when I hear stuff like that, it, it's just so foreign for me here in Denmark. We we don't have anything, you know. Uh, well, I think we have one snake that has some venom that can bite, but there's only that one uh, type <laughs> here in this country, and it, it's not lethal. Um, mm. or, uh, well, okay, if, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you get bitten by it and you don't get to the hospital, I guess it could be lethal, but it's not... It's not too bad. You have time to go to the hospital and everything as well. So it's not like instant re reacting venom or anything like that. So wow. I don't know that the whole thing about all those animals and not, well, it doesn't have to be poisonous, but just raccoons, like you're mentioning, like that, that whole thing is just so foreign to me. <laughs> I mean, I think, I don't know if you remember if I told you, but last year when we were walking to the, the main house on the property, we, I saw something running through the field and coming up towards us. And I'm like, why is there a Shetland pony loose? I mean, I'm in Vermont. So of course people would have ponies. And then I'm like, that's not a pony. That's a bear. That was. It was literally the biggest black bear I've seen outside of Labrador. I mean, I, we've traveled. Oh I've slept God. next to grizzlies. Have visited our campsite. But to be walking in Vermont, you know, I'm on my way to take a shower. My dog is like 50 feet ahead of me. I'm like, yeah. It was Oops. huge, and I'm just happy my dog is very well behaved. And if you open, you do a hug thing, and you call him, he comes running with his ears back and his little tail wagging. So I was doing that while watching this bear run like 10 <laughs> feet behind him. I'm like, okay, so yeah, there's, and then a few oh months, a month God. later, we saw the female mother with two of her cubs right walk right by the front of the cabin. So that was just amazing and i'm glad the dog was inside again because she would have had a third cub going with her yeah if i could sit inside and watch it and i know that i'm safe then i think it would be pretty cool but honestly walking around like in the forest and knowing that a bear could suddenly pop up like i don't know i as a danish person i'm just not used to that kind of thing <laughs> there's only one thing that frightens me in the forest and that's actually other humans most animals they're fine people are scary that is true yeah and but and that's also what we normally see in all the uh, zombie tv series right it's actually the humans that are the most scary ones to come across not the zombies no <laughs> that's true yeah a week on the internet with the am writing fantasy podcast so i was wondering did you notice that uh, facebook has announced that they're gonna they're going to create a new publishing platform. I had seen something Did and I meant to that? read the article, but I didn't go read the full thing. So, no, you can fill the listener in as well as me. Well, yeah, kind of. I, I just thought that it was quite a significant news, so I just wanted to share it. Uh, but I did actually write up a post for our Patreon supporters with my thoughts on this topic. So uh, if people want to go into the details, then sh I suggest you go on to Patreon and, and check out what I shared there. Um, but I just found it pretty interesting, and um, that's why I wanted to share. And, of course, you can also... Uh, Search on the internet if, if mm -hmm. you want to check it out yourself. But I think it's something to keep an eye on. Um, but I'm not so convinced as of yet, which is what I explained on Patreon. But uh, let's see where it goes. I, at least I just wanted to mention it so people can keep an eye on it. Yes. Well, you know how I feel about Facebook, that 
Yeah. <laughs> and I actually like Instagram, so that's kind of sad. I think I liked it better before Facebook bought it, but yeah, that's my, pretty much my uh, theory on most things with Facebook is okay. That's nice. <laughs> well, moving on. Yeah, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> well, uh, speaking um, of Patreon as well, we yes. want to give a huge shout out to Brian Mendonca. Right. I hope that's how you pronounce Dominic, the name. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Brian uh, is our new newest Patreon supporter. So thank you so much, Brian. And uh, we could not keep the Am Writing Fantasy podcast going if it wasn't for people like you. So uh, thank you for that. Definitely. We'd love having you join us there. And I mean, it's been good. It's been busy. Even Dominic, I want to give a shout out to, out to him who posted a, a link to us spontaneously and uh, is saying how much he was enjoying what he was learning on Patreon. So that's just, that's wonderful to know that you're really helping other authors. And that's what we do over on Patreon, even more than we do in the M Writing Fantasy Facebook group. So I would love to see other people join oh, yeah, us there. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So there's a link in the show notes if you're interested. And there is all kinds of rewards that we offer over there as well. So, so go and check that one out. But one more thing, Autumn. Oh, oh, geez. And... Else. <laughs> I almost felt like not sharing this one with you. To be <laughs> no. You really do have something else. Now what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you save these. I swear you save these for me. <laughs> I, I did actually say it, yes. And I love to spring things on you in the middle of a podcast episode. But this one is actually going to play in your favor. And that's why okay. I didn't want really to share it with you. All right. I'm because I feel like I'm playing cards into your hand that you can use later on against me. And I don't like that. <laughs> I love that. Please share. It's my birthday this month. Come on. This is my present. Please. Okay, so okay, so a birthday present then. But did you notice the YouTube comments on episode 119 where we shared the 10 worst stories ever told? Oh, let me guess I'm winning. Am I winning? Please tell me I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> so when we are, just for the listener, when we are doing these alternating list episodes where we sort of go a bit crazy and have a bit of fun with some random topic like we did uh, in episode 119 where we shared those uh, 10 worst stories ever told we always uh, have a bit of competition going as well where we uh, try to best each other and see who can build the the best list basically or the best worst list uh, and <laughs> yeah the best worst list yeah usually and on that note dominic said and yeah uh, oh this pains me so much to read out aloud so you're killing me, Dominic. Please don't <laughs> post stuff like this and these kind of comments. Thank you, Dominic. <laughs> oh. So Dominic wrote, quote, oh my God. <laughs> okay, qu quote, I have to psych myself up for this even. <laughs> she just said it quote, to me. Autumn tends to win, Jesper, unquote. Yes. That's what it says. Autumn tends to win. What? It's not, yes. It wasn't even just that episode. It was in general. What the... <laughs> Oh, Beep. man. Dominic, you're, thank you. You made my day. I owe you like a page of review or something. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, well, no. I strongly, strongly disagree with those YouTube <laughs> comments like that. And I, I don't actually appreciate getting that kind of comments. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's oh. just fantastic. I'm winning. I hate it. I have a feel this one is going to come back and bite me later. I don't like it. <laughs> now, now it's hanging there. <laughs> it's the precedent has well, been Can set. we move on? I don't feel like talking about this anymore. All right. Let's get into editing. And on to today's topic. Okay. So when we write together, I'm usually doing the first draft while you and charts of the editing, Autumn. I so... Pro writing aid is sort of your domain. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you did give me a virtual tour of uh, pro writing aid before we invested in it, but uh, the fact that I'm not doing the editing also means that I have uh, not too much knowledge about <laughs> what you're actually doing inside this tool. 
<laughs> well, then I guess your role in today's podcast is letting me know if what I'm saying is clear and understandable and not gobbledygook. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll it's... try to ask the stupid questions today. Yes, and it is. I, I, we started in January. So again, I had uh, we were planning on writing together. You were working. We were working on the novella. And I was also finishing up my Tainted Face series, and I wanted something to really enhance my editing. I mean, I think I do a pretty good job. I do several passes. We've talked about how we I edit before, that I do like a content edit, and then I do like a word choice, and then I'm doing really the fine tuning, you know, making sure everything looks good. And then I send it to the editor. And I just wanted something a little bit more on that fine tuning end. So this is after the content edit where I know all the subplots are good. In general, everything I think everything I think should be there is there. But something before I send it to the editor. And because of that, we looked at Fictionary, we looked at Autocrit. And when I was looking at Fictionary, I think, I suddenly thought... I should check out Pro Writing Aid because I was a user with that when they were just mostly, they were like a little baby company. Um, And it was in my Google Drive when I still had my full-time job and I was doing some editing like in Google Drive while at work and my lunch break and stuff like that. So I had a premium subscription at one time to Pro Writing Aid a long time ago and I thought it was pretty impressive then what they do now <laughs> they're pretty awesome so that's that's sort of the background yeah, I, I to what happened it, yeah yeah indeed and i just wanted to inject as well that because the other part of why we were looking at these different softwares was also that we have been thinking that at some point in the future uh, we don't know when but uh, and it could be years out uh, i don't know but we have been thinking that at some point, because the the world, the fictional world uh, or fantasy world that we call Elysium, the one we created, is so big. And we created it so big on purpose because we were thinking that maybe at some point we would like to um, publish other authors who write in this setting as well. So one of the initial drivers behind looking into all of this was actually that we were trying to see if we could find some sort of software that could help analyzing work. Meaning, for example, let's say that we wanted to take on board uh, two, three authors or something like that. And we said, okay, we uh, if anybody's interested in, in us publishing uh, your work, uh, which would also mean that we are advertising it and all that stuff on your behalf, then... Um, you know, send some some of your work to us so we can see your writing. But the problem with that, of course, would be that it means that we would have to sit there and read nine novels, for example, <laughs> which at my reading speed would probably take three years. <laughs> so so that's, that was not very good. So we were trying to see the, the Fictionary, Autocrit, uh, th- those were the two we started with uh, before Autumn's thought of Pro Writing Aid, but... We're trying to see, can we use any of those tools to sort of like load in a manuscript and then get some sort of report from the software saying, what is the writing like? Uh, so that we, want to, we, of course, do want to read some of it, but we don't want to be forced to read entire novels. Uh, on, you know, so it would be like an initial screening thing. So if it said already, if the software already says, this is not very good, you know, then why spend all the time reading it? Whereas if the software said this is really good or or there's no problems with it, then we could go in and read it, right? So we we were looking for some sort of screening process. So so it was just to put the whole thing in context because I maybe some people will think that pro writing aid is not quite the same as autocrit and fictionary. There's some overlap, but it's not quite the same. So it was just to explain where we were coming from as well there. Right. And where I hope I didn't confuse things. There. <laughs> I don't think so. They're all, I would say, it's definitely worth checking out Autocrit and Fictionary, and they all have different mm, things that they do. Autocrit seemed to be more towards editing. They had a lot of reports that were similar to Pro Writing Aid, but not quite as beefy. And then Fictionary had some really good tips on how to write better and develop your novel better but actually didn't get into a lot of the editing <laughs> aspects where pro writing aid has a really in-depth 
editor. But besides that, they have this wonderful overview that tells you, hey, these are the areas you're strong in, which I love that they start out with. These are the ones you did well in. And then they have ones where they kindly say these are areas you might want to look at working on. And then you can go into each of those individual areas that they say you need to work on. And there's a sub report where you can just look at just that one and work on it and fix it. And I've developed because I've done like what, three or four novels already. And it's what March in <laughs> pro writing aid and going through all of these stories. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm like totally an expert on which of these reports that I go through and I have my own little standard of running through them to see how things develop and what I like to develop. And I've noticed actually some really cool quirks, um, but depending on my characters, that a few reports will actually show up different ways. And so you can almost see the character's voice showing up in the reports. So it's kind of, that's really fine tuned and nuanced when you notice, when you're noticing a software and AI going through something and saying, this report, this metric is always reading this when it's this character. You're like, darn, that's really funny. <laughs> but the nice yeah, thing. So even that is if pretty you, cool. It is really cool. And I can tell you which report that is, but which ones I notice. But there are definitely some reports there that I don't go into quite as much. And that's okay. I mean, everyone's going to look at things differently. Uh, some of them I just don't take the time, and maybe I should spend more time on them, but I feel like I've already covered them later. But some of the, we can get in some of the best reports, and I know my favorite is called Echoes. And this is a phenomenon, I'm sure you've noticed this, that once you think of a word, you tend to use it two or three times really close, like after you write it the first time. Like you'll think of something really some strange word i don't know pick out something but you know not pencil but it'd be like maybe a description um an action and you'll end up using like thrust or pulled or glanced look those words like that and you'll look at you'll reuse it like two sentences later and then you'll reuse it like six sentences later and that just gets boring for the reader that's why we have a thesaurus and it's hard, though, when you're editing, and especially editing, editing your own work, it is so hard to find those words. I used to read backwards, my entire manuscript backwards, just trying to find them. Other people will read it aloud because if you hear it, it often, um, ca you catch it so much easier that way. So you have to do something to really see what's in front of you. Or you can run it through a pro writing aid and look through the echoes. They have two different versions and it took me a second to do this, but they have word repeat, which looks at every single time you've used that word in the entire chapter. I, uh, the beautiful thing about pro writing aid is if you write in Scrivener, like we do, it actually can open a Scrivener file and edit chapter by chapter in Scrivener. So you don't even have to like move your file into a different format or spit it out into word. It's just, I love having everything in one place. So it's so nice that it does that. And so I'm opening up my Scrivener file and letting it run something. You don't want to do the, the whole repeats, but Echoes just does when you use that word again within the next so many words. Like you can set it to whatever you want, 300, 500, 1,000. Uh, that's a little high, but it depends on what you're writing. If you're doing a scientific journal, you might want it really high. You might want it really low. And that is definitely to me the place to start is to see how many times you've reused the same word. And it's just like, even when I thought I was good and I was being paying so much attention to, you know, not reusing the word too many times. Oh no. When you run it through this echoes check, you're just like, Oh my goodness. I, I am in love with this word. Look is my fallback <laughs> word. I, I double check that one all the time because it seems like I always reuse that one way too many times. So I'm often running through and doing stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also, I, I can't say on top of my mind which ones I, but I, I definitely notice as well that uh, even when I write the first draft, sometimes I, I notice myself repeating the same word. So I do, I do as well pick up the thesaurus and tries to try to even the first draft to try to use some different words just to uh, not make it too painful for you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I do it painful on myself. It's just our tendency to do that as writers. It's like we get these things stuck in our head and we just keep using the same word. 
And it's just so nice. Like I said, it's so hard to find it on your own and that it has this echo check is just so fantastic. It's one of my favorite ones to run. It's where I usually start. And it is impressive how much that cleans up your writing right off the get go. You're really forced. It's nice because it highlights not only where you used it, like how many spaces you used it, but then it comes up, you click on it, it comes up with a thesaurus and you can see, you know, other options. You can think about it. And that's really, that's my most time consuming. Um, is that embarrassing to admit that that is my most time consuming edit in pro writing aid, aid is running the echoes check that can easily take a half an hour or more because I'm really reading through it and pulling things out and trying to change not just using the thesaurus yeah per chapter and not just using a thesaurus but I tend to sometimes rearrange sentences and really try to really really develop things a little bit better with this check yeah and and when you do that so when you make changes it changes inside the Scrivener file itself correct Yes, correct. And that is one of the nice things. So when I then go back and open up Scrivener, all my changes are there. As long as you hit save, and it does warn you. If you didn't save it, it says, hey, you didn't save this. But <laughs> you do have to hit save. It, it's not like um, I work on a Mac, so I get so used to like, what? I changed something. Obviously, I wanted to change it. If I changed it, I wouldn't have changed it if I didn't mean to change it. So Macs always save everything if you change it. But yeah, not for writing it. You have to actually hit save. <laughs> Right. And from, so what are some of the other reports in, yeah. in the software? From there, I the one I've noticed that actually has some nuances based on characters, as well as my own author voice, is called Sticky, which I think that just sounds like a fun, <laughs> a fun report to run. But sticky sentences are ones that use a lot of filler words instead of the nouns and adjectives and verbs. The filler ones like the, is, or actually yours is a verb, but, you know, not even strong verbs. So when you have a sentence with a lot of those, it's harder to comprehend for a reader. They're going to pause. And they can be really short sentences, but usually they tend to be your longer sentences. And that's the one I've noticed, that I have a few characters that do speak in kind of wordy styles. And those sticky, those my sticky rating will be like 46%. And it does give you ranges of what is normal in writing. So I think 40 is usually the upper level. I tend to, if I hit 40, I'm really proud of myself. Usually 42% is like you, know, my low end. I tend to write short sentences, which is funny. It gives you a sentence variation that says like average sentence length, I think is between 11 and 18 based on the genre I've chosen. And I tend to write like 10.2 um, sentence length, 10.2 words per sentence is my, seems to be my average or 10.8, 11.2. But my sticky index is really high. So every once in a while I have a sentence is like 32 words long. <laughs> so like, oh, you know, sentence variation. <laughs> and it is, it is at least something that does give you, there's a whole report on length where it'll tell you your sentence lengths and it'll show you almost like an audit, audit, audio graph you know the ups and downs it'll show you so you can see that you are really varying your sentences these are important tools that it's happy it's when i do you know red pro writing aid i look at it, i'm like oh yeah i've already got that good so i tend to skip the length report unless i just feel like you know looking at fun squiggly graphs but <laughs> the sticky sentence one is one where you get to sit down and you see these sentences and then it's in this computer is saying this might be confusing this is going to make readers stall and you can go through and try to reduce those sentences and clean them up and move out some of the stuff like do you really need to have this description this description and the and 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 or and can you not break this into several sentences and clean it up and that really does help that'll help your readers so much to know hey this is really a long sentence or this is really even a short sentence that just is not clear can't you put in a better noun can't you put in a better verb make this a more concrete less sticky sentence. And so that's a fantastic one. And from there, and yeah, and I, I think sticky, quite yeah. A, yeah, and quite a lot of these are basically things that helps with the line by line editing. But I believe that, uh, I mean, I, I don't think unless I'm wrong, but I don't think you are using it so much, but I do believe that Pro Writing Aid has some stuff that helps with sort of character arcs or, or the plotting elements and stuff like that, doesn't it? 
It has a little bit. It has some later ones. It has some um, reports on pacing. So you can see how many sentences, how many paragraphs you have that are slow. One thing I wish it did is it'll tell you how many paragraphs you have that are slow, but it won't tell you out of how many paragraphs in the chapter. I have not, it'll tell you sentences, like how many sentences you have, but not how many paragraphs. And I think it would be so cool if it would tell you, you have like nine paragraphs out of 28 that are slow, because then if you wanted to, you could make your own chart to see how that is graphing. But it does help to see, like, is this a lull? You can, you should know for yourself, like, hey, I meant to write this chapter as a lull, or this one is a hurdle, so it should be a lot more exciting. And you look at it and you're like, oh, I only have four slowed paragraphs. Perfect. This is a hurdle. Or you look at it and you open it up and it's like, it's 10 slow paragraphs that are full of like description and emotion and it's just really slow and you're like, oh, well, that's okay. This is a lull or should it be, should I be reworking this to make sure it's better? So that is one. And then it has one report. This is the only platform out of everything we looked at that had a report that was on census that actually looked through your text and pulled out how many times, how many words you use that fit each of the five senses. And that was fantastic. Uh, that's where Fictionary I thought was pretty cool. It gave you some advice to always use all the senses, but you were supposed to fill in which words you were using. Pro Writing Aid says, hey, you used 2%, um, so four words that were in smell. And I think that is really cool. So with just one quick check, you can say like, I hit all the senses, or it says you're missing one. You'd be like, oh gosh, I have to go back in and add in this one. So I think that's a fantastic report. It really gives you an idea of how you're doing on all using all the senses. You know, do you see only 50% is sight and you didn't use any touch? This would be horrible. You need to go fix that. Yeah, so in some degree or some sense, I guess you could say that if you are looking for some sort of software tool when you are, let's say, first starting out and, and you basically want to work more around story structure, character arcs, then Fictionary might be the better choice. But if you're looking for some software that can really help elevating your writing and, and looking sentence structures, uh, word choices, uh, using of senses and all that stuff, then Pro Writing Aid, well, it, it is more powerful than Fictionary. Uh, and, and, I, I, and I also think that Fictionary is better than Autocrit. So, so I, th I think it's almost like Autocrit than Fictionary and then Pro Writing Aid. But, but that's, of course, looking at our needs. But right. if you are like a completely new author, you want some help, some software help in terms of just structuring the story, then Fictionary might actually be better than Pro Writing Aid for your needs. Uh, I but, agree. Yeah. The one thing I really enjoyed with Fictionary for the, because there's a free trial. And I mean, if you want to go check it out, that's what I think is really cool. It's got a 14 day free trial with Fictionary. And there's a 14 day free trial with um, Pro Writing Aid. So you can't lose. In fact, you can do both at the same time and use Pro Writing Aid in Fictionary and then you are really doing some powerful writing <laughs> at the same time. You probably could just focus on one or the other first though. But there are some really cool note features in Fictionary where it goes and you want to know, like it tells you to use the senses and you can go click on the little question mark and it explains why and what you're supposed to be doing. And I kind of like those notes at the time, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now when I'm in pro writing aid, uh, the one thing I think it really isn't the great at, greatest at, and I've actually sent a question to the staff over there, is I think the thesaurus is kind of weak. I also have a pro, a premium subscription to Grammarly, and Grammarly is purely just fixing your sentences. Uh, the thesaurus periods, you know, those kind of things. The, concrete changes. It doesn't give you any of the reports of Pro Writing Aid. So I think Pro Writing Aid is more powerful, but Grammarly is thesaurus and understanding how you use like the word in the sentence. Like if it, the word could be a noun or a verb, Grammarly will figure out what it is and give you some really amazing concrete suggestions for your thesaurus. Pro Writing Aid, I... 70% of the time, I think there's a word in there that's acceptable maybe less than that, sometimes 40%. It depends on the word. Like I had 
I had reused shoulder a few times, and one of the the suggestions in the thesaurus was left. I'm like, how is left a good replacement for <laughs> shoulder? I just that one sticks in my mind, but it's not usually that bad. But there are times where if you highlight the word one place, it'll give you some suggestions, and then you highlight it below, it won't have any suggestions. And I'm just I don't like those inconsistencies. I'm often either either I know a better word myself or I'm reworking the sentence and I'll just come up with something better or I'm going into, you know, I'm Googling synonyms of another word and I've actually put in a, uh, a t- they're not a ticket, but they have a way of putting in features that use suggestions. And so I put in a suggestion where we can add in our own words into the thesaurus because I am so sick of googling the same words because I can't remember that I used it in the previous chapter and I know there's something better so that's about the one place I really think pro writing aid does kind of fall flat the thesaurus could be a lot more robust and you know if I could have anything I ever wanted I would love to see them like do a next generation where it says hey you use this word like shoulder or glance so many times why don't you try using a different body part why don't you try i would love to like see like the emotional thesaurus if you've ever used that online or have that book uh, which i'll often have open in my kindle when i'm doing mm-hmm. you know edits and i wish it would be like tied into pro writing aid where it says hey this looks like it's an emotional cue why don't you try this one but in all honesty, that's what you pay an editor for. If you're paying for a really good editor, they should be picking this stuff up. I think it would be so cool to be like developing the AI to that level. But, you know, that's a really big ask. And I know that. It's basically like, I want you to like program an editor into ProWritingAid. But it would also be really cool if it could develop that much and be like, hey, you're using an emotional cue. Why don't you try something? else here hint hint (laughs) yeah for sure that that would be cool yeah i I should also mention by the way that uh and i do not remember the episode number but you can go out uh, you can go back and check if if you want but we did interview the ceo of fictionary in a past episode where she talked uh, christina i think she's called and she uh she talked a lot about uh well, all the features within Fictionary. So if Fictionary is something you're interested in, just go back uh, through the podcast feed and find the one where we are talking about Fictionary uh, and then listen to that one as well. Um, But I was also thinking, Autumn, um, so using a software can sometimes feel a bit overwhelming, meaning like, okay, so I have all these reports, I had all this stuff I I can get from this software, but... Maybe if you, maybe it would be useful for some people to just, if you sort of just boil down a bit about what would be the sort of steps that you would suggest, like do this and then do this and then do this sort of uh, give, give some people a bit of a template for pro writing aid, basically. Absolutely. And it's one of those things, no matter where you open it, it has this huge menu of reports across the top. And you can run an overview always, especially if you're just getting familiar with the program and you're not sure where to start or how your own writing is looking, run the overview report first because it'll get you oriented. It'll tell you where you're strong. Yay, I love that they tell you where you're strong. It'll give you some graphs. It'll tell you, go focus on, you know, go look at these other individual reports. So, you know, that'll give you a good starting point. Then at that point, the one report I would say never, ever, ever run, they have one that is basically all. It'll run every single report that it does all at the same time and just highlight all your text. It is chaos. I mean, I'm chaotic. I admit it. But this is chaos. This is so overwhelming. So just to skip that one and also skip repeats because <laughs> those two will just make you feel like, oh my God, I don't even know where to start with this. You will feel so overwhelmed. Just skip that. Go to Echoes, you know, do your overview, go to Echoes, you know, double check your length of your sentences, which is a good one. Run your sticky report. Below sticky is cliches. That is a fantastic one. There's a report on dialogue. It'll tell you if you're using things consistently. There's also a consistency check, which is also really awesome. So it'll tell you if your capitalizations are consistent. Like, are you, um, you know, mages or you have names that you're uppercasing and sometimes lowercasing? It'll give you a fix for that. 
you can go down and then do, there's one for homonyms. I used to be horrible at homonyms. I've gotten better. I would say the homonym report there is, it tells you every single word that is a potential homonym. It doesn't just look for ones you might've misused that. So that might confuse you. Cause like if you, it'll highlight or, cause or can be or, or it can be or as in like a paddle. So you'll, you might get yourself a little overwhelmed with some of these reports. You've got to look at them and take a minute. You know, there's some information you can go online and see what they're about read those, run, you know, the sensory, the pacing, run all of those, but do each one individually. And it kind of is set up in order that if you start on echoes and work your way to the right, just go in that sequence and then come back. And there's a final one that I love to wrap up, two final ones to wrap up with. And one is overused. And it's like echoes, but it's totally different. It tells you if you've simply used this word too many times compared to previous writing. Like I say, look, so it'll tell you, Hey, you've started sentences with ing endings way too many times compared to published writing, go fix those. And then once you do your overused words checked, go and run the regular grammar. That's like the last step, which is actually the first report. So it's a live report, go fix everything there. It tells you to do and then hit save and that chapter's done. Yeah, so I think overall, if you, I mean, pro writing aid should probably be a useful tool for almost everyone, I would say. I think so. Uh, Autocrit, I would say, no, <laughs> just uh, skip that one. Um, if you need, as we said before, if you're, if you're quite new to writing and you need more of the structural help, then probably check out Fictionary. Yeah. Maybe get both Fictionary and a Pro Writing Aid on trial versions and see which one you, you like the most. But I think it's probably safe to say that your editing phase and your writing will become better by using some of this software. It's not, it's not just some you know, nice thing to have. It, it It's almost in the category of need to have because it actually does make a big difference. It really does. I think my sen my chapters edited with ProWritingAid are sh so much stronger than what I was doing before ProWritingAid. I really think the sentences and the echoes and the checks that I'm doing through ProWritingAid I see an improvement. It's got an extra polish that I could not have done on my own. Yeah. So that's something for, for you to check out. Uh, sign up for a trial version of Pro Writing 8 and if you haven't uh, or if you aren't using it already and uh, see what you what you think of it. But other than that, then uh, next Monday, I'm hoping to have an interview for you with Alex Newton from Klytics and we are going to talk about what sells in the fantasy genre. If you like what you just heard, there's a few things you can do to support the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. Please tell a fellow author about the show and visit us at Apple Podcast and leave a rating and review. You can also join Autumn and Jasper on Patreon.com slash Am Writing Fantasy. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get awesome rewards and keep the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast going. Stay safe out there and see you next Monday.